Atlantis Resort is quite possibly the most recognizable resort in the world, but what's the honest truth about this place and is it worth your time and money? Hi guys, Vanessa here and welcome to Passport Pages. And my longtime viewers will remember this Atlantis video I made way back in 2019. Many agreed with my thoughts, some thought I was a bit harsh, and I haven't mentioned it since. But we just visited the resort during a Caribbean cruise. Yes, I was one of those many annoying cruisers who crowd the property during the day, guilty. But I actually found quite a few changes as well as upcoming changes and wanted to do an updated review based on my most recent experience. So stay tuned as I share my honest thoughts and all the good, bad, and in between of the world famous Atlantis Resort. So first of all, as many of you know, the Caribbean Atlantis location sits just off Nassau in the Bahamas, very close and accessible to the local port, which is why so many cruisers visit each day. A lot of guests staying on property find this to be very annoying and intrusive, and I get it and even agree, but that's how they make a big chunk of their money, and I really don't see that going away. So when you arrive, the first thing that jumps out at you is just how outdated the property is. It opened back in 1994 and hasn't been updated since then until now. Yes, finally, right? While the main lobby is amazing, giving a great first impression, the rest of the property, especially the rooms, are in desperate need of updating. But thankfully, the entire property is undergoing a huge multi-million dollar update to make everything look more fresh and modern. And I think this reno will help solve 50% of why visitors don't find this property to be worth it. The Royal, which is the hotel where the famous towers and bridge are, are getting all newly updated rooms and suites with a more modern and neutral style, thank God. And the Royal East Tower is expected to be completed in the summer. But probably the biggest change will be the replacement of the beach tower with a brand new hotel called Somewhere Else, which is set to open next year. And we'll have 400 modern rooms and suites, as well as on-site restaurants and pools. So like I said, the outdated style of this place was one of the guests' biggest complaints, but I do believe with the property currently undergoing these updates, the property is now worth consideration as it all looks very promising, especially if everything turns out according to plan. But perhaps even more than the previously run down and outdated style, the biggest complaint for every guest has been the mediocre and therefore overpriced food. Everyone agrees this is the main reason they either don't try the property or they try it and then deeply regret the decision. And variety was never the issue with the food here, plenty of that, but the problem was always quality. But now, in the past few months, several Michelin-starred chefs have come on to partner with the property, creating new Italian, Mediterranean, and even healthier quick service options. So great strides there. But you might say, well, that's all well and good, but it still doesn't solve the price issue. But luckily, beginning in May, sad it wasn't quite ready for us when we just visited, but all future visitors can add their new Atlantis dining plan, where all three meals at over 30 dining options will be included, yes, including fine dining as well, for $140 for guests 12 and up, and $60 for guests ages 7 through 11, while kids 6 and under eat free with the purchase of an adult dining plan. So essentially, it's your typical all-inclusive package, but as an add-on option, and I think it's really going to go a long way in helping to cut cost for a stay there. So I'm very hopeful and excited for this specific change. I think it makes a lot of sense and probably should have been in implemented much sooner. But the good news is they've seemingly listened to guest complaints and are finally taking some much needed action. I think these are all good signs. And my biggest hope is that they add more local dishes and seafood options. Everything has always been burgers, hot dogs, and pizza, just very generic food. But all these chefs they've partnered with are incredible. And it seems to be exactly what the property needs for improvement in dining quality and affordability with their new dining plan. And I honestly think all these changes sound very promising. 
So the next issue with this property is that it's not just the rooms that have been looking old and run down. The rest of the resort, including all the water park areas, have been in great need of a refresh for years. I'd say for about a good 10. The rock formations were previously chipped with missing paint, the aquarium tanks usually looked in need of a good cleaning, and even the water in the lazy river and some of the pools looked a bit dirty. But again, good news, the whole property is getting a refresh. We could already see the difference, but a lot more to come with more modern finishes and textures coming for the outdated casino. And even the kids area splashers has new slides and play areas and everything is being repainted and freshened up. And just these small touches are making a big difference in the overall look of the place. I was very pleasantly surprised. Again, I think this is in response to the extensive complaints from guests, but regardless of the reason, it's wonderful to see more care being given to the facilities, everything is looking improved, and hopefully this maintenance continues on a regular basis into the distant future. So now that I've talked about all the big improvements that have happened and will be happening in the future, let's switch gears a bit and tell you what my newly updated pros and cons are for this place based on my very recent visit, taking all the improvements into account. So first to the pros, great water park, one of the best and continues to be. The leap of faith is thrilling. The lazy river is better than most. The dig is really well done, very unique experience for a resort. But you might ask, is that worth a full stay or just a day trip? That's a personal call, of course, but we just did a day stop, as I said, on our cruise, and it was the perfect amount of time. But now, with the new improvements, in the future, we definitely consider a longer stay. I know, shocking, but I really think it's going to greatly improve. And with the new all-inclusive package option, can't really complain about price overall, especially for the size of the property and amenity options and all of the unique elements as part of your stay. But there are some harder to fix issues with this property that will remain on my con list. And let's begin with the layout of the property. It's somewhat confusing to find your way around the property and even the maps can be confusing. Like you see where everything is, but not the best path to take to get there. Very few of them even have the always helpful you are here. And at Atlantis, that's not a small issue. Compared to all the things they're fixing, this is a very minor issue, but one that still needs to be mentioned. Another con that I need to mention, and no, I'm going to get flack on, and that's fine, I still need to say it, but that's the service. Now, at first glance, the excuse might be the size of the property and how many guests, both day trippers and longer stay guests, are visiting on any given day. Maybe the number is too overwhelming to get good service, although it wasn't crowded at all on our most recent visit. But there's a bigger issue going on. Everything takes a while to get, from drinks and especially food, and some employees aren't very friendly. Some definitely were pleasant, while others, not so much. And I'll just say, this is not an Atlantis-specific or even Bahamas issue. Quite frankly, the employees here actually were some of the more pleasant ones we've encountered in the Caribbean. And sure, we've experienced adequate and even good service in places, but generally speaking, you just feel like you're inconveniencing people when you even ask a question. So I'd be curious to know if you've had service issues when traveling in the Caribbean, because I know it can't be just us. So now to the big question, is it worth a visit now as opposed to before based on the improvements and upcoming changes? I would say yes, I do think it is. I think they've made great strides to improve on all those customer complaints they were receiving over the years. And honestly, more brands should be doing so instead of just silencing the customer. Honestly, more than anything, I believe it was a wise financial decision for them, especially improving the dining quality and selection because many guests were choosing to visit the water park but dine off property and it was just too much of a profit loss. And to a lesser extent, guests were doing the same with the rooms, enjoying the water park during the day and sleeping elsewhere at night. And now they're modernizing and updating the rooms as well. I think the most important thing is that this improvement in aesthetics and quality be maintained. If all of these new changes only improve the property for, let's say, a year and nothing is cared for and maintained, that would obviously be a wasted opportunity and financial investment. So I really hope it continues. And of course, the next question to ask is, is it worth an extended stay or just a day trip? 
We had a very fun time on this recent trip, really enjoyed ourselves for the day, but if you're traveling as a family with young children, yeah, I think the new and improved property is definitely worth trying for a few nights, absolutely. We didn't get to visit Cove Beach since cruise passengers aren't allowed, but that's definitely an advantage of staying on property. Plus, over at Marina Village, they have a cool parade every night with lots of dancing and singing, which is really fun. Kids love it. And those are the kinds of cool extras that you really only get to enjoy when staying overnight. And now to my biggest tip of this review to thank you for sticking till the end. If you're a Marriott member, the Cove and Royal sections of the property are part of their autograph collection, which I've talked about in other reviews, Marriott's more upscale properties. Well, you can redeem Marriott points if you stay in either section, which is a great way to save money by paying with points. And with everything getting increasingly pricey, I'm going to be adding more member point tips for you guys because they're a great way to save on travel. So I'm very curious to know your thoughts. Do these changes make you want to visit or revisit Atlantis, or is it too little too late? And also, please let me know if you would like this on-site kind of vloggish style of video, or prefer my usual style, or maybe you would like to see a bit of both. I tried this several years ago when I first started my channel, and it didn't go over so well, so I'd really value your input. This is Vanessa for Passport Pages. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you all very soon. Bye, guys.